So April 15th is coming, tax day, and uh, it's time. It's the annual time for everybody to get hysterical about taxes. Uh, that said, Joe Biden today had something to say about the difference between the uh, Buffett rule and the Romney rule. Here's what uh, Vice President Biden had to say. Look, the Buffett rule says no one making more than a million dollars will pay a smaller share of their income taxes than middle class families do. The Romney rule says that the very wealthy should keep every tax break and loophole they have and get additional new tax cuts every year that are worth more than what the average middle class family makes in a year, in an entire year. The Romney rule says let's double down on the tax cuts for the wealthy. So Curtis DeBay is with us with the Heritage Foundation, senior policy analyst on tax policy, heritage.org, of course, the website. And Curtis, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. I see uh, you're welcome. Thanks for joining us. I see uh, this uh, article, uh, this is- issue brief that you guys uh, put out. Tax Mageddon, massive tax increase coming in 2013. Doc, um, I, I, that's the appropriate response. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and th- what that is is that the uh, 39%, 39.6% tax bracket, top tax rate for very, very wealthy people that gave us a balanced budget and started paying down the national debt under Bill Clinton, uh, which got blown up by by George W. Bush with the Bush tax cuts for the top 2%. That's going to go away, and so that 35% top tax rate we have right now is going to go up to 39.6%. Holy cow, it's going to raise $56 billion. Well, That's a terrible thing? Is a much bigger issue than just the expiration of the Bush tax cuts and just the top rates going up for top earners. We're talking $500 billion in one year alone. Uh, the expiration of the Bush tax cuts, 60% of which are for middle and low-income families. The expiration of the payroll tax cut. The, uh, the expiration of the AMT patch. So the payroll saying, tax cut that was the Democratic proposal, you're in favor of that? I'm just saying that when it expires, it will be a tax hike. Okay. <laughs> so any tax... Any temporary tax cut when it expires is considered a tax hike by you guys. Well, it it was at one point temporary, but it's been extended for. Well, two the Bush years. tax cuts no were temporary time. too. No, they're not. Twelve years is temporary. Come ten on. years. It was uh, ten years. It was passed for, and then it was extended for another two. Exactly. They've been in place for twelve years. They're not temporary. They were never meant, intended to be temporary. They're not temporary. Well, if they weren't years. intended to be temporary, why weren't they passed as laws rather than as temporary yeah, you resolutions? Know the answer. You know the the, the answer is because it didn't it didn't require it didn't require a majority. It didn't it didn't require a super majority in Congress to pass. Well, that's how that's how reconciliation works. That's how the Democrats got through Obamacare. Right, and so it's temporary. Is Obamacare temporary? Well, Obamacare can be challenged in 10 years. <laughs> it was done by budget resolution, uh, reconciliation. Well, obviously, it's obviously neither it's challenged ever right now. To be. No, neither were ever intended to be temporary. And once it, once Okay, well, let's say it was never intended to be temporary. The immediate consequence of it was that George Bush added more to the federal deficit in his 8 years than if you exempted Ronald Reagan from the equation. Every other president in American history, from George Washington up till George W. Bush, combined. That was the consequence of that. Well, and you want to keep that policy in place? Okay, all I'm saying is that I, I've, you're going all over the place with this. I, all I'm saying is that it's a tax hike. It's a major tax hike. The expiration of the Bush tax cuts, the expiration of the payroll Maybe tax it's cut. a good tax yeah, hike, Curtis. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as a good tax hike. Just so exist. so if if we find ourselves in a war, God forbid, well, actually, I guess we're in a couple of them right now, we shouldn't pay for that. We should just put it on the credit card and There's have our children pay for it, like George W. Bush in, did. Plenty of revenue coming in the, to the federal government to pay for spending at, actually, at historical levels. Tax revenue will be right back to where it's been uh, for the last 50 or 60 years once the economy fully recovers. We're spending 25% more than we have traditionally. We got spending back down to where it's been. We're, we'll, we're, spending, no we're spending at rates like we were spending. Thir- no, no, as a percentage of government, uh, what, what, what you are seeing right now is the cost of government as a percentage of GDP is at rates that were back during the Eisenhower administration. Well, that was they were too big then. I'm not sure. I don't know about your math, but I mean, we're at 25% of GDP. Historically, we've been at 20. That's a 25 22% of GDP right now. No, we're above that. Or wherever Obama's budget is, it's 24% is where he wants to be. Okay. 24, actually, more than 24%. Well, and, and you consider Canada a disaster? I consider... Canada's 54%. <laughs> I think that we need to be back 20% for the federal government. Yeah, and you consider Norway a disaster, 58%. Remember, you have to add on, those are, you're just looking, you're looking at, when I say 20%, I'm talking uh, 
just the federal government. We have to, we add That's what I'm states, talking about, too. States add on. There's, when, you go, when we add on the states, we're going 31%, 32%. Uh, so... Anyway, but okay. So you want you don't want to you don't want to end the Bush tax cuts for millionaires and billionaires. You want to extend those and and for the middle class. I'll give you that. And and you also want to make sure that people like Mitt Romney, who paid thirteen point nine percent on over twenty million dollars worth of income last year, that people like Mitt Romney are never going to pay more than fifteen percent on capital gains income. So so people like Paris Hilton and Mitt Romney, who are in their living, sitting on their butts around the pool, waiting for the dividend checks to come in, whether it's inherited in the case of Paris Hilton or the or the uh, five Walton heirs or whether it was uh, the result of you know, building a business like, like Mitt Romney did, that that income is never taxed at the same rate of, say, somebody who is working as a teacher. I'm actually less concerned about Paris Hilton and Mitt Romney than I am about new investment. When you raise the capital gains tax rate, when you raise the dividends tax rate, you're going to get less investment throughout the economy, which will mean really? lower economic growth really? and uh, less job creation. So, so, so during the, when Ronald Reagan set the tax, capital gains rate, at the exact same rate as the as the top personal income tax rates, saying that they should be the same, you think Reagan was crazy? Again, I'm not, I don't. I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to. But I'm talking about 1983 when he raised the cop the capital gains rate to 28 percent. But he, I mean, he later through tax reform, we, we got it we got it down lower than that. Yeah, uh, Newt New got it down, but uh, it would have been over Reagan's objections. Yeah, but remember, cap gains I believe were taxed at regular income tax rates up to that. That's point. what I'm. No, they weren't. You, 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 capital gains rates go back to the twenties. Okay, so dividends were the uh, anyway. It doesn't matter. Reagan wasn't infallible. No one, no one ever said that. Uh, lower capital gains rate means, means more. Really? Investment. Can I can, can I play that tape over and over again of you saying that? Well, I mean, well, I, I won't I don't, do that I don't know to you, Chris. You try to always put that back on us, like Ronald Reagan. Everything he, did, he was a great president, great conservative president. But we've learned an awful lot about taxes, policy, and a lot about economics in the years since. And we know that keeping the capital gains tax rate as low as possible is the best thing for the economy. So America. those those periods of time in American history when the capital gains rate was closer to the ordinary income rate, when it was certainly higher than it is right now, like for example, during the Clinton administration, when it was twenty percent, right now it's fifteen percent. The Clinton administration did not outperform in terms of investment the Bush administration. Is that what you're saying? Because the facts don't support that. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure where you, what you're driving at here. The, the what I'm saying is, is that the tax rate on on returns on investment do not influence people's willingness to invest. People will invest because they think they're going to make money. If they're going to pay five percent more on the money that they make, so be it. But they're going to make money. People no. are not going to stop investing simply because they're going to, you know, they're going to make a little bit that, less. That explanation is a misunderstanding of how it works. If you're an investor, you're going to demand a certain rate of return on your on the money you're putting up. What you do Why? is you raise the hurdle rate for new investment. So if I'm an investor, if I'm Warren Buffett, I'd say I'm going to require a 10% return after tax return on the money I'm putting up. That means that you're shrinking the universe of. When so you, you don't want to take it from 15 to 20 percent where it was during the Clinton administration. You don't want to take it from the current 15 percent up to Clinton's 20 percent. And you're saying that when it was a 28 percent during the Reagan administration, Warren Buffett must not have been investing. That was when he made a lot of money. That's when he really became you, you, the richest you, you, man in America. Let me finish. What I'm saying is that you're raising the hurdle rate. There's going to be less total investment. Warren Buffett's still going to invest because he's still going to find places that will give him the return that he requires. But there's going to be other investment that got squeezed out because businesses simply cannot re meet the rate of return that investors require. So during the Reagan administration, we had a horrible economy that was falling apart. There was, <laughs> there was no capital formation. Oh, there was, there was plenty of capital formation, but we had major, major tax, hike, tax, tax cuts. We went from 70 to 28%. You had a, tw you had a 28% uh, capital gains rate. Right now it's 15%. You don't want to raise it to 20%. I don't get it. I want I want as much investment, as much job growth as I can get. We can get more of it, more of it with a lower capital gains the rate. The way to do that is to put more money in the pockets of working people because they spend it all, which generates demand, which builds an economy. Right, and that's the Keynesian logic that we've been seeing the last three years. How well has that worked out? Uh, it's worked out pretty good. We went from $700,000 jobs a, a month being lost to jobs being made. But Curtis DeBay, Heritage.org. You can read all about it over there.